sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. Shake your body. Wake your fuck ass up. That crust on you. Oh, good. Come on, man. Luke James saying I was duetting with Luke James. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm in good voice today, Heather. Okay. And it's only appropriate because our next guest, we've been speaking about her all morning long. And I had this big introduction I set up for her. All right, okay. You know, because I've been following her career for a long time now. And then also we had everybody from Entourage on the show. But, you that's know, true. You know, so, but that's years ago. We're talking about the now. And I had this big intro set up for you. So before I introduce you, well, actually, DB, who works with us, um, is a gigantic fan. And he approached me this morning and said, when you came in here, is it okay if he introduced you? And um, so this is the first time he's ever done this. He's been here for years. It's the first time he's ever requested it. So I'm gonna let him do the honors. If you <clears throat> nice. take my gum out, let's get this right. Let's set the tone. Let's Wonder tone. Uh, if you don't mind, put on some music for me. Oh, my favorite movie ever is Ferris Bueller. I have it here tattooed on my wrist. His girlfriend Sloane, I used to think, was the first and only Sloane that would have my heart. Until a woman by the name of Sloan became Eric's girlfriend on Entourage. Next, she starred in a movie with Usher, where she fell in love with a DJ. I threw out all my Usher CDs, and I learned how to DJ. And you, and you learned how to DJ. Then I found out, I used to think she was Italian, but I found out she was French, Canadian, Jewish, and Moroccan. Ooh. And I almost converted. And now she plays Gina, a hypnotist on the series on Hulu, which is dropping today. Shut up, Wonder. Which is ironic because the series is called Shut Eye. Ooh. And I would never shut my eyes as long as she's on the screen. Ow! Emmanuel <laughs> Shrieky. Wow! <laughs> tell you that wins i have never had an intro like that thank you wow <laughs> damn that was nice that was nice are you single i, I practiced that <laughs> no oh but wow. if i was <laughs> manual shrinky's here <laughs> <laughs> that was the remix what she says she's not single yeah, Manuel Street yeah, anyway, she's on this series. Yeah, that yeah. girl. Yeah, the one girl from the yeah. mix. Yeah. He didn't really like in the mix in the first place. No, he right. didn't. No, he didn't. Gave yeah. me one star. I thought he was going to bring up Cadillac Records. It's Ooh, just, you know, yeah. it's... Still got time. Yeah. This is my first one. Can, you, know, you can do it again? Yeah. Okay, well. <laughs> Emmanuel, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. You guys. <laughs> Amazing to be here. Absolutely. You know, just listening to all, all these accolades, and you've got many more, you know, and it did... It, 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 you, you've been around. You put some time in now. Yeah, it's been a minute. It's been a minute, right? <laughs> um, I brought up Chess Records because you got a, 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 I mean, Cadillac uh, Records because you got a chance to play with um, Beyonce a little bit. Mm -hmm. did, did you get a chance to interact with her at all? I totally did. I mean, I was, th I was on set when she was doing a big scene with Adrian Brody. Yeah. And I, I got to watch her in action, and she was so impressive, man. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure you've met her along the yeah, way, yeah, well, yeah, probably. Yeah, 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 Emmanuel, yeah, yeah. You know, that's yeah. that. But you she's want me to call her? so call her. lovely. <laughs> like, so lovely. And she has such an incredible work ethic. Mm -hmm. And she, you know, was playing Etta James and slayed yeah. in that part. Mm -hmm. um, it was amazing. And uh, and then, you know, it was really cool. Is a couple years back... I went to Made in America in oh, Philly, yeah. and um, suddenly it was like the the crowds parted, and Jay Z came walking, and I was like, oh, like wow. full, full. Mm -hmm. I mean, full. Yeah. And then somehow or other, I don't even know how we got up there, but we got kind of like into his section, and somebody made an intro. So I meet Jay Z, and. And and I was like, you know what? <laughs> I'm such a lame -o. I was like, you know what? I said, I did a film with your wife. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like a long time ago called Cadillac Records. And he was like, 
we just watched that. And and he was so lovely and so cool. And he was like, let's take a picture. And I was like, pinch me. Is this happening this right happened, now? Right? Yeah, it was cool. <laughs> so you fanned out for Jay-Z, I man. I fanned out hard. Wow, that's dope. But that's she dope. held her own. She did a movie. She wasn't like, oh, I have all your albums. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I had something, a little card to play. <laughs> Were you wearing that name ring, that your, your EC right there when you met him? Probably. I that's, always that's wear a it. cool sign. Like that that's that's hip hop right there. Like oh, really? people yeah, <laughs> like a lot of, you don't see these anymore. There was a time in the hip hop era where everybody wanted a name ring, ring or an initial, initial ring. ring. And it showed like that you were a real hip hop head. I bet he saw that and was like, <laughs> Come on, homie, I got <laughs> right, you. <that's> <laughs> she her up, right? Yeah, and she got it on her pinky, killing the game. I love, it. I love that. <laughs> wow. Did you grow up listening to hip hop or hundred oh, percent. That's yeah. yeah, it was that's much I mean, hip hop R and B. Um, my birthday's on the weekend and every Every year, mm-hmm. I do um, a '90s hip hop R&B dance party because that's just—I mean, I grew right. I feel like yeah, we're all the yeah, same. Yeah. Well, and I grew up in Toronto that had a sick music scene. Uh-huh. Um, you know, because we had the the influence of calypso and uh-huh. reggae oh, and yeah. all of that. Yeah. In, in you know, li- living downtown Toronto, so I was such a club kid, and so now that is just. My idea of a good time is 90s hip hop. 90s hip hop. <laughs> so, I love 90s hip hop. <laughs> so great. You don't care if you have a boyfriend no more. He's back. He's back. He's back. He's back. He's back. I, didn't, I didn't hear that part. And a husband. Yeah, yeah. I don't go, care what go, he go is. Go ahead, man. This is you, bro. Go ahead, man. Yeah, you know, I, mean, you know, do, you know. I mean, do you want to talk about the series? You know, I watched some of it last night, so we can talk about that. Oh, you did? I would love to hear your thoughts. All right. Well, it's out right now, by the way. Shut Eye <laughs> on Hulu, all 10 episodes. <laughs> You play Gina, a hypnotist. Yes. Kind of uh, shady in some ways, yes. but also very um, talented in her skills. Yes. Now, there was one thing I did want to ask you all to be serious. Mm-hmm. Romney, I believe, is his name. The, the head mobster guy who's kind of like oversees all these parlors. Oh, the Romani culture. Okay, yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah. yeah. He tells a story about some folklore about the crucifixion of Jesus mm-hmm. and why gypsies are allowed to steal. Is yeah. any of that true, or did they simply write that for the series? Do you know, Les Boheme, the creator of the show, he did um, re- like tons of research. And we had an expert, a Romani expert, that was there as well, I think, because they really wanted to make sure that everything was pretty authentic. So my guess is that it's pretty authentic. Um, I mean, as far as I know, I feel like the gypsy, quote unquote, culture has been around forever yeah, yeah. yeah mm-hmm. right yeah. so i wouldn't be surprised okay you well know? well, the, the basis of the series since we're kind of talking about it without people knowing is uh there's uh these different uh palm reading parlors and they're run by this organization who take a cut out of whatever they make yeah right and so you know they have these different parlors and these rules that are set up that if you go against what they allow you to do then you have to sort of pay a price for it and anything like that so they bring in different uh, it's, it's also all like a scam yeah. which is funny because me and Wonder we would always see these palm reading places here in New York or LA uh, um, Sunset Boulevard we don't know how that woman stays in business we never see anybody in these places I agree it's crazy to me they're everywhere and we would think like what is this some secret you know government front or something like how the hell are these people still in business exactly so i thought this was a really cool series that somebody finally addressed like what the hell is going on with I these agree. parlors isn't that great yes i'm just i'm just <laughs> i just like right <laughs> right i love it <laughs> no but here's the thing i can't believe it hasn't been done before yeah mm. Like yeah. really, because everybody asks the same question, especially when you see a parlor in in Beverly Hills. You're mm-hmm. like, how are you paying rent? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's like one down the street from the Mondrian, like like just little tiny like yep. palm reading parlor. Never nobody Wait, in but, there. But, but you you never been you never had your palm read. Right, I have had my palm read. Yeah. I have had my palm read. It was a a psychic palmist from India. Uh huh. Huh. That sounds serious. It was cool. And he, you know, sort of, it was different. It wasn't like, go, you know, going to some place mm-hmm. off of Sunset. It was uh, almost a lot more spiritual than that. He was mm-hmm. sort of based in Ayurveda and all that kind of thing. Um, but, you know, since the show, I'm much more of a skeptic. Like, uh-huh. I, where it comes to healing arts and all of that stuff and psychics and astrology reading and whatever, anybody who's going to tune into your energy, I'm just so, so um, 
I want to make sure that you're operating from the light. Like, Absolutely. I don't need the mm. dark, whammy, no. Mm. <laughs> right? That, I mean, we are deflecting that on a daily basis mm. anyway. Mm-hmm. So I try hard to kind of keep clean. Yeah. <laughs> you got clean. to. Yeah. It's true. You know, Emmanuel, when she walked in here, she said, I love the energy in here. Mm-hmm. And, we, and those are trigger words for me. And I, I have it, Tracy, most of us. Um, and we we are cognizant of the energy we create. For sure. Right? Yeah. Um, you have ever been on a set where the energy wasn't up to par? Oh, like, yeah. how do you function in that? Um, it's tough. Yeah. I think it's real hard. I mean, I feel like you know, you you go to your trailer. I mean, I meditate every day, uh-huh. but in a situation where um, if I'm someplace and like it's it just feels off, yeah, I always will take a salt bath. A salt bath, yeah, mm. like Epsom salt, right? Because it's right. super cleansing. And and I think too, when you're in the media, you know, I I always say this, and it could sound crazy and flaky, though. I feel like in this room, not at all, but. We spend so much time cleaning our exterior, right? Oh, yeah. Washing our teeth, washing our face, blah, blah, blah. But I think the same could be said for, you know, keeping the inside clean. Mm-hmm. And energetically, I think it's important to keep your aura intact. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's no question that there is more energy out there than what we see. Yeah. And if somebody's giving you the evil eye, like, you can wake up one day and just feel off. Mm -hmm. And now when I feel off, the first thing I think about is, like, oh, God, could that be, like, psychic attack? Mm -hmm. If I'm out, you know, promoting and there's, like, crazy energy, whether it's good or bad, by the way, just that amount of, like, directed energy, Mm -hmm. that, like, kind of can screw with Mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. So I just, you know, I have people in my life that keep me clean and... Keep the evil eye away. That's and, what's yeah. up. Yeah. That's dope. Uh, yep. Uh, Emmanuel Shriki is here. My friend, his mom, when, um, I think I may have mentioned this, when they feel, you know, like uh, dark forces that are attacking us, mm-hmm. she burns seeds on the oven, on the uh, stove top in aluminum foil. And when those seeds pop, that means that. Oh, wow. You know, that there's people that are. Oh, wow. Are they specific seeds? Not like. Yeah, I just don't know what they are. I'll find out the kind of seeds, but wait, it, that's it, crazy. And if they start popping, then that means that there was actually like crazy people out energy. there that got <gasps> energy against wow. you. Wow, you know, somebody close to you is putting that energy mm. against you. Emmanuel Shriki is here. Uh, Shut Eyes premiering today on Hulu. Uh, we're gonna open up the phone lines. Want to talk to her? Eight 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 seven four two three three four five. DB is making all kind of connections. We'll find <laughs> out where that goes. That's up next. Sway in the morning. <laughs> Emmanuel Shriki, uh, Jeffrey Donovan. It's a Katie Strickland? Yes. Um, they're all from Shut Eye, which is premiering today on Hulu, where you play a hypnotist. And that particular scene, um, I feel like that's when your introduction happened, uh, when you came into mm-hmm. the uh, office and you was meeting, because his character, Charlie, is, uh, what is he? Is he a palm reader? Or He's a, he a psychic. A psychic. He does everything. Yeah, and then you want to get in on the racket. Totally. So you came in and and kind of <laughs> like, you yeah. hypnotized him. And honestly, I was looking at it. And I knew I was looking at a TV show, or looking at a show. <laughs> but I felt like the way you did it, I kind of got caught up on your voice and in, in, in emotion. You you touched your hair. I saw that. Yeah, <laughs> I, saw, I saw that. You kind of touched your hair and then like sh- repetitive repetitively movement. Yeah. It's seductive, right? And then if you happen to be watching it, you kind of fell into the trance yourself. Wow, that's yeah. a huge compliment. And, and, and then you had the what do you call a charm bracelet thingy, mm-hmm. and, and it was kind of like it, it had me. But I was thinking, man, she must have put a lot of time and energy in learning how to do that correctly. Or well, yes, yeah, did you you studied it or I did. Well, I, I had um, so I worked with a hypnotherapist okay. for about three years. So it's you know a therapy session, and at the end of the session, it's like about twenty minutes of hypnosis, and it really it's just super gentle, like positive affirmation. You know, she would record it so you can listen to it at night, and it you know it goes deep into your subconscious. That's okay. the idea. The, okay. So when I got this part and I auditioned, I said to the creator, I was like. This is so weird. I said, I've been going to hypnotherapist for three years. Wow. Uh-huh. And he was like, oh. And so, you know, art imitates life, life imitates exactly. art. So I was like, okay, yeah, that's cool. And then um, I went to her 
and she taught me some really cool things that are that are like strictly hypnosis and it's what you picked up on so like oh. repetitive movement yeah. so like when i kept moving you know my hair out of my face yeah, yeah. that's like one technique yeah. there's something called mirroring where you mirror what the other person is doing so super subtly so like you're like that and mm-hmm. i might also just sit with my hands put together like so or you know something called nlp which stands for neuro-linguistic programming Hmm. and so you can say a word you know two or three times or pick up on a word they're saying Mm -hmm. um so all these like super subtle things or you know how when i touch him on the shoulder and then when i bring him out i touch him on the shoulder again yeah that's all part of hypnosis stuff wow. I could never do it by the way okay, well, you, you, you were doing it right now look at DB <laughs> DB hasn't said a word so you can start talking <laughs> um, okay so and, and then his wife is apprehensive she's skeptical the wife don't believe the shit yeah. right mm-hmm. so uh, Katie's cut character doesn't believe just knows that you're up to no good yeah you know and they, even there's a scene where they torture you and she puts you know she puts out her cigarette on your leg mm-hmm. and all of this stuff and it's like, yo, I like her character. She's yes. like, get out of the way of my man. And then I blink my eye. <laughs> and then Here you it knew goes. it was coming. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then the next scene, I, I thought I was watching the most beautiful porn I ever witnessed in my life. I was like, oh, my God. What just happened here? <laughs> yo. Yo, oh, Emmanuel oh, and Katie so were like funny. in the bed. And I was, but it At was it. beautiful. I was like, wow, these... I mean, yeah. Listen, you ever do a scene like that, first of all? Not like that. I would have known, yeah. I would have oh, you, you thrown that in the intro. Yeah. <laughs> I have never done a scene like that. And we were so lucky because that, fir- that was the first episode. And we had our director, Johan Rank, who is an incredible director. And he, the way that he... Um, wanted to do that scene like he was like i need like he's like i don't want this to be tv he was like yeah. i just like i want this to be real mm-hmm. and i mean it, it to be honest with you it was really a very beautiful moment mm-hmm. and incredibly liberating i think doing a love scene with a woman versus doing it with a man it's a lot less loaded mm-hmm. i mean with a woman you're able to just recognize like oh that's so sensual but i'm not worrying about like oh god what if i'm Oh, I have these feelings. I have to tell my boyfriend about this other right. dude, or like yeah. whatever. Like it's not like that, and it and the, and it's so caring, and mm-hmm. it's just it's just different. Mm-hmm. And so I really felt we both felt really safe with each other. And when I saw it, I was like, "Damn!" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. We we okay. thought a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that that has to be. I, how does that compare to like doing a, a love scene with a woman, pulling it off? You guys could walk away. There's no leftover residue. I'm, I'm sure. Wow. Um, but um, <laughs> great choice of words. <laughs> there's no leftover feelings. Um, but uh, how, how does that compare? And that's a big accomplishment. Accomplishment. You pulled it off. But there's other things as an actor that you got. You have to accomplish at times. Like people. There's some people who could cry. Mm-hmm. And they get to carry that one tear, and that's yeah. one thing. Mm-hmm. But there are other people who cry. You believe that, mm-hmm. man, this person is really going through some pain. Mm-hmm. Like, is is it a similar feeling when you're able to accomplish something like that love scene to when you're able to accomplish a big dramatic scene as well? For sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know, any that's such a great question because I feel like. <clears throat> You can't gloss over a love scene. Mm-hmm. Like a love scene has a beginning, a beginning, middle, and an end, and it's integral to the story being told. So oftentimes, you know, when I'm looking at a love scene, I'm wondering to myself, okay, is this the first time they've been together? Is this the fifteenth time they've been together? Is this nervous? Is this kinky? Is this hot? Like, where are we in the story? Because that's telling. Because mm-hmm. you can have like a crazy love scene you could have a super gentle love scene you could have there's you know what i mean there's so many there's so many ways to Mm -hmm. play a love scene Mm -hmm. and so for katie and i we were able to um you know it's she is playing a woman who is just feeling trapped and suffocated and this is like a a real release for her and something that she needs 
Mm-hmm. And my character, well, listen, Gina's just <laughs> a pothead who, uh, right. pot, pot. she's just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna go to the phone lines right now. We're gonna take them to uh, Gary, Indiana. Ryan, what up, man? Hey, Ryan. Ryan. What Hi, up? Ryan. Well, what up, family? What's going on, family? Emmanuel, how y'all doing this morning? Doing okay, so man. good. Good, good. Emmanuel, I've been a big fan of yours. Been digging you since that movie you did with my dude from NSYNC. What was that, On the Line? Oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Lamp. Yeah, I got a, I got, I got a question for you because you work with a few of my favorite musicians. Do you have any uh, other musicians slash actors you would like to work with in future productions? Ooh. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, shoot. I would love to... Oh, God, there are so many. I would love to collaborate in some way with Pharrell. Pharrell? Um, mm. I don't, I, I don't even choice. know. Yeah. I mean, I don't even know that he acts, but I'd love to do some collaboration with yeah. him because I think he's dope as hell. Um, oh, my God, there's so many. Mm. There's so many. But you I name love. Pharrell. That's a that's good. good. That's yeah. good. Yeah. You stop. Yeah. You can stop. Okay. There. Okay. Yeah, 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 I'll, yeah. I'll stop there. That's a high <laughs> bar. Hey, great question, Ryan. You're a citizen, man. Let's wait in the more. All right. All right. Emmanuel Shriki is here. Uh, check out Hulu, man. This new series is great. Shut eye. I was. I thought maybe we'll get some folks from the Gypsy culture if you're a part of the Gypsy culture. Uh, calling in, or maybe even a hypnotist mm-hmm. or a psychic, Psy- yep. palm Astrologer. reader. Eight 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 seven four two three three four five. While you do that, we're gonna. This something we do with our first time guests. You have to uh, stick your hand in my sack. <laughs> Put your hands into Sway's sack. That sounds gross. <laughs> it's Sway's mystery sack on Shade Forty Five. Take it how you want it, Emmanuel. He- uh, Heather, t- explain the rules. <laughs> okay, Emmanuel, our friend, our sister, <laughs> go on and dig in Sway's gold sack. Pull out one question at a time, read it out loud, and you have to answer honestly. You're going to do it three times. Good luck. First one? First one. Oh, my God. (laughs) Something tells me that these are all the same. No. (laughs) (laughs) That's a cruel joke. If you had to become a lesbian tomorrow. (laughs) Wait, hold up. Who wrote that? (laughs) was not me. (laughs) Tracy. Which three women? Which three women would you think about going down on? Oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> that didn't come from me. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a dumb savvy. Look at Tracy. What the hell? What the fuck? It's a mystery set. Wow. <laughs> no one's holding back. Okay, so I have to answer that. Yes. All right. If I was going to become a lesbian tomorrow, uh, let's see. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Oh, let's see. You want me to throw one in? No, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Give me some ideas. Well, you don't. Oh! oh. <laughs> 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 you love him. Um, um, okay, wait. Let me think about this. No, I, I know that I have a few. Okay. Um. Kate Moss back in the day. Okay, Kate okay. Moss. Okay. Hottie. <clears throat> yeah, anybody will agree with that? Um. Joan Smalls. Joan Smalls. Oh, really? yeah. Puerto Rican beauty. So gorgeous. <laughs> wow, you pulling out so, ethnicity? So gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You jumped right on no, that. I'm Joan Smalls. Yeah, so that's my friend. Like, that's my friend. That's who, my else, friend. who else? Who else? Um, oh, God. Joan there's, Smalls. There's you there's killed so her with that one. Many. You got to do a black girl. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so Tracy can imagine herself. <laughs> nah, that's not true. <laughs> First of all, why are you snitching? It's a mystery set. Okay, what about that? Um, how about a little Joy Bryant? Yes, Joy wow. Bryant. Yeah, Joy Bryant. Joy Bryant. Yeah, awesome. What a good Joy taste. Ha ha! Ta da! I hope they hear this. <laughs> all right. Question number two. Oh, wow. Question number two. If you were forced to live in a different era of American history, what time period would you choose? Oh, okay. Oh, the seventies. The seventies. Like I would, I would want to be like in my twenties in the seventies. In the seventies. Yeah. That's dope. For sure. Yeah. yeah. All that music, that oh, soul music, and my God. Yeah. I, the, the, I would. I heaven. That is yeah. actually heaven to me. Post civil right movement. Oh my gosh! Black Panther Party, Oakland. Good times. Yes. I'm from, from Oakland. All right. Is that where you're from? Yeah. Oakland. Born and raised. Yeah. All 
All right. Final <clears> one. <throat> I said that real sweet. Yeah, born and raised. Yeah, oh my God, yeah. I watch love it. it. This he keeps coming up today. That's so funny. No, you could throw. You could do another one if it has to do with being a lesbian. That, no. <laughs> okay. What something about your bestie Lance Bass that we might be surprised to know? Okay. Okay. Lance is a friend of the show. He was here not too long ago. <laughs> Listen, I love him yeah. so much. What is something about Lance that people would be surprised to know? Um, I guess he makes this known now, but. Oh, maybe I better not say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, he told us he had sex with a girl before. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you were going to know. Surprised to know. Oh, can I choose? I don't know. Can I choose a different one? Yeah, go ahead. Last go ahead. one. I can't think one. about. Yeah, 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 that's, yeah, that's your bestie. You could get a duel, but since okay. you answered the first one yeah, like a we, champ. We didn't think he was going to answer the first one. So. Oh, have you ever tried to deal with an inappropriate coworker? Yes. Uh, it's not that he was a coworker. Somebody in the business, we had a big meeting, um, and he sort of wanted to like slip me his number, and I had to figure out a really eloquent, <laughs> non-offensive way of sort of like getting myself out of it, and uh, I did. I believe that there was flowers and a card sent to me, and I ended up writing a card back, like a beautiful uh. card back, um, just praising his knowledge and his wisdom that he gave me over over the dinner, and like just kind of sidetracked. I sidetracked. Saw you yeah, yes. That super scary. curve. Yeah, super Ugh. curve. That's the super curve. Yo, man, yeah. don't feel guilty for even right. doing it. Yeah, indirectly. She That's pretty I'm good, smart. man. Hey, man, this is great. This is great. <laughs> Emmanuel Shreeky, um, you can check her out on Hulu. This new series, I guarantee you, is worth watching from episode one all the way to ten. Thank you. What a perfect guest you are. Uh -huh. Come back anytime. Such a pleasure. DB, you want to say anything in closing? Flowers and, and don't work, right? <laughs> <laughs> and a card. Uh, we, we got a big announcement to make. Who's up next on our Doomsday Cypher? We'll let you know coming up next. Sway in the morning. Shade 45. It's Sway in the morning. Only from Shade 45.